Okay, so I am so excited to have Nicole Miracle on with me today. Um, anybody that's in to the sport of ob obstacle course racing is aware that Jacksonville just went down. Thank God, finally, there was an event that came off that was legit in the sport. And Nicole handily took out the, the competition in that event, as did, you know, uh, VJ Jones, who is someone that I'm closely involved with. Uh, as a coach, let me just be clear with that. And uh, anyway, I have Nicole with us, and uh, I'm going to try to do something fancy like this. That's our guest. And yeah, this is the Natural Running Network. First time doing this where I actually showed my logo involved. And, you know, enough about that. Let's just go ahead and bring Nicole in. There she is. Nicole, hey. thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. So, Nicole, you know, we talked earlier quite a lot. And, uh, you know, just to let people know where uh, my interest lies in this conversation that we're about to have is this new project that you're, you're putting together, which, as you suggested to me, is kind of a two-part thing. There's the dream team, uh, as you suggested, and I'll let you give detail about it, is going to end up being about five female athletes that are going to compete in obstacle course racing. And then you have a development program that you're doing for women. So can we start from the back and work our way forward? Because we talked a lot about, you know, how you're going to arrive at the conclusion of the five girls on the elite uh, part of things. Talk to me about the development program and how that works and what your end game is. Yeah. So um, with the development program, the community group, the idea is to address the larger program, the, the larger problem in obstacle course racing which to me is that there are far fewer women in the sport than there are men. And I think it's a reflection of a few things. Um, it's the, the maybe like the larger issue that women drop out of sports at a younger age than boys, than like their, than their uh, male counterparts do. Um, and there's the whole movement about that, you know, trying to get girls to stay in sports longer. Um, the other, the other thing is that, um, the sport was, uh, when it was started, it had this like very um, military reminiscent background to it. And I think that's um, another thing that, you know, you can talk to like Faye Morgan, for instance, and get her, um, her, her perspective on what it's like to be in the military as a female. And especially at the time that she was, she came into the military, it was far fewer women. Um, and so, so the whole, like the language of, of obstacle course racing, the, the feel of it is very male dominated and, um, not always quite as inviting to women. Um, it's a very, it's, it's a great community. It's a great sport. And so I don't want to have any confusion about that, but just, but just like inherently it is, it is more male dominated and, um, and that in an, in and of itself can be somewhat intimidating for a female to step in. So. Okay. Yeah. So then the, the idea being a, we're going to try to encourage more women to participate. And yep. when you talk about a development program, is there going to be some responsibility on you to uh, help guide them, you know, teach them what they need to know mm -hmm. and such and such. How does that, how does that shake out? Yeah. So the idea is that there will be a platform that will make it really easy for for a female to come into the sport and see how essentially like what's like the blueprint for me to to get into OCR and to improve in the sport and you know where can I go to train who is in my area to connect with um, like what what are the mentors out there that could help me along the way what are what are the best ways of training who are the coaches um, you know, like a very easy location to have all these resources in one spot and one that is like, it's all led by females. And so it's a little bit more inviting in that regard. So then, um, sorry, somebody's trying to call me here. <laughs> Climb that call. So essentially, um, even the coaches and the whole relationship is going to be female. So there's not going to be any males involved in the process. Um, no, <laughs> which I, I, I don't, I'm not offended. I don't, <laughs> don't want to offend anyone. 
Um, I mean, I personally, I have a male coach. Um, I've actually always had male coaches. Cheater. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so, I mean, I have, I have no problem with male coaches or, or anything at all. Um, it's just that if I'm, if I'm going to do a program that's for women, then what better way to just to like elevate women in general than to have women experts on board. Um, well, I wouldn't I be opposed that, to that. I just think that it, I don't think there should be any harm in having maybe some, some males involved that are supportive. I mean, the, the, the idea is to create a community and, you know, I mean, I'm with you. I think you're right. I think that you should have more women in the sport. And I think there's definitely some room to, uh, you know, to mentor uh, women so that they can, they could see, feel, make their way into the sport, but shit, there's old guys like me that could be pretty successful and helpful with you, you know. <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm I, not soliciting my it. business. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. There's other guys out I, there too. Totally, I think that, uh, especially the the bigger like community platform that I'm building, even though it will be primarily for women, I think that uh, I think there's definitely opportunity for for there to be other voices in that group too. All right. I mean, I'm just, I, you know, that, just, just, just a thought. So, yeah. um, then... <laughs> well, I do think, so right real quick on that subject. Yeah. Um, what, one of the ways in which it can, OCR can seem a little bit more inviting for women is if we have women at, at all different levels and if, and different positions in the sport. So, you know, having, having more female coaches, having more females on podcasts, having, um, you know, female race directors or, or, you know, engineers that are, that are like sending out ideas, for, ideas for obstacles. Um, I think all of that will, will help. So if we, if you, if we only see, you know, men, men doing podcasts and, and that's like kind of like the, the voice in the sport, then there's just like a large part that's missing out. So. No, I, I don't disagree with you at all. I think, hmm. no, but I, again, I mean, it's, it's like, I think if you want to do it, you do it right. I mean, if, if, mm -hmm. uh, if there's a female that, that can really develop a really interesting obstacle, you know, great. Nobody cares what they care about is what's the obstacle look like. Right. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's the whole, the whole argument of women fire firefighters, you know, I, I mean, something I can relate to because I used to work with women that are trying to get in the fire department or, or the police mm -hmm. department for that matter. Can you hold your weight? Or the military mm -hmm. for that matter. What if yeah. what if I get shot? Can you carry me out of the out of the battle? You know, I yeah. mean uh, And that's one thing I want to show, like in, in my racing in particular, is that like uh, you know, I can go through obstacles just as fast as the men. And I can, you know, I'm, I'm not tall. I'm Faster five, three a and a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm not making like big moves on obstacles. And I, I think, yeah, or, or like I'm again, I'm not that big, but doesn't mean that I can't carry two 40 pound sandbags. Um, it might it might be a little bit of a struggle, but I can do it. <laughs> right. All right. Well, no, again, I, I'm not trying to be sexist here. I just I'm, I'm just. I'm trying to be the fly on the wall that's asking the question. So, uh, no, so you're doing a great job. Yeah. So let's talk about the elite project. Let's let's talk about that. So you're talking about um, right now. You're you're taking names and looking at resumes and trying to decide who's going to fit in and who's not. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you know the obvious thing that you portrayed to me earlier before we got live here was that. The first thing you're going to look at is their pedigree. You know, what have you done? How fast are you? Uh, you know, what do you know how to do? What don't you know how to do? Um, and we didn't go much beyond that. I would think that character is, is a concern. I mean, uh, yeah. I know I know people that are really good in sport that I won't have anything to do with because they're just <laughs> they're just flat, no fun to be around, right? And yeah. you you know when you're developing a team, the last thing there's no I in team, right? So you get mm -hmm. this one person that everybody hates, right? So that I would think that there's needing to be some consideration for like, are you likable? I mean, are you going to get along with others? You know, uh, I don't know. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And I have, uh, I can't really pull my website up right now because the internet's kind of funky, right. but, um, but yeah, I have, I have a lot of, a lot of uh, different elements. Yeah. D different. There's different questions about that. And there's, uh, yeah, there's, so I'm, I'm looking for athletes that can compete at the highest level, but I'm also looking for women 
who can be leaders in the sport. And when I say a leader in the sport, I mean that they're going to be setting a good example. They're going to be uh, committed to also pushing, you know, the same, the same vision of creating a welcoming community, one that's encouraging, one that's, that's like inviting for women and for everyone. Um, and one that's going to be, a, so I, I, so my saying is like, you can be a fierce competitor, but you can still be a nice person. <laughs> you can still be, <laughs> you, you can, can kick you can somebody, go out but you got to apologize afterwards, right? Yeah. Like you can, you can like, you know, kick, kick me down in the last like hundred meters. And then, you know, we're going to, we're going to hug at the end of, at the race and we're going to go get like a a glass of wine together. (laughs) Um, I think that's an important consideration too, is that they need to be able to drink a little something, you know, you don't want any tea, (laughs) no teetotalers on your team. Um, Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, I I like alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages um, and it's, it's fun to, to let loose and celebrate at the end of a race for sure. sure. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I don't know if you want to discuss some of the things that we spoke about. Uh, and if you don't, I'm, I'm totally cool. They just tell me to shut up and I will. Uh, but you, the once let's, uh, a couple of questions come to mind. First of all, let's say that you end up with five people and you already told me you got a scat of people to look at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to end up with five women. And once you have these five women, so let's just say that, you know, my name's Susie and you like me as an athlete and you're, um, you know, we're talking about possibly me being on your team. Do I look like Susie? And and so um, I'm going to say, okay, well, Nicole, what's in it for me? Yeah. So, so what these athletes are receiving is they're receiving support uh, from coaches, so strength and running coaches, nutritionists, sports psychologists, and performance psychologists. Um, m- a mentorship for me. So I'm available in kind of like uh, the capacity of I'll help them navigate the sport, know what ra- races to go to, um, connect them with the race directors, connect them with um, with companies, and help them manage the world of navigating potential sponsorships if they need that. Um, so trying to set these women up in all ways that, that surround being an athlete and being able to, to compete and, and to, to train and have that as your job, essentially. So then, you know, the broad stroke is uh, the support system that you're going to bring to the table is beyond being coached and have access to these professionals and, and your knowledge and your you know, your, your, your experience in the sport, you're actually going to throw a little money at them to help them at least kind of make their way and also look to help them with any sponsorship arrangements that they could, they can garner to, to help them make their way through the sport as well. Because I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, the one thing that really uh, defines a professional is being able to put, put it to work every day. You know, you got a nine to five job or you've got a 40 hour work week it's really tough to put in the type of time and training um, that you need to really be at that level, you know, as you're probably really aware of, you know, yeah. I'm sure you know of athletes that are struggling to try to keep the job, to pay the bills, plus uh, try to compete at a high level. So uh, obviously the financial support is really, really important for an elite. Um, mm-hmm. So that's really cool. I, and again, I, I, uh, you know, I told you this is the reason I even asked you to do this with me is because I was very excited to hear what you're doing, because I think that there's not enough of this. You know, why haven't the guys done this? I mean, I guess they kind of did. Try, <laughs> right. The guys kind of tried to do this. But guys are terrible when it comes to organization. You know, you what did they try to do? Well, just try to develop uh, the same type of thing that you're doing, but not not. Even if it's not gender specific, it's just like, Mm -hmm. you know, let's put together a group of athletes that are going to be independent and not be holding to any organization. And when I say organization, I'm talking about race producers or what have you. Um, And, you know, quite frankly, by the way, let me just back up and say this. The Natural Running Network, which you probably don't know and most people don't know, they think it's a podcast. No, no. 
what it was, it was I had a coaching certification for coaches, running coaches. You came in, you participated in the certification. If you passed, we gave we we allotted you the region that you're in. You coach your own people, but you coach based on the premise and and uh, uh, circumstances that we've taught you, so that we're all on the same page. So, Coach Nicole in Colorado, you're on our website. When somebody's looking for a coach, we point them to you. They pay you. Uh, well, they pay us. We pay you seventy mm-hmm. percent. And the idea was to get all these coaches together around the country that are collectively involved in the network and mm-hmm. have potentially across the country 10,000 athletes that are participating within our coaching structure. And then market mm-hmm. the coaching structure to say, um, you know, I, I hate the company, but I'm going to say it, Nike or somebody that's got the money to support this big global coaching concern. So. Yeah. The idea of trying to, you know, make your way as an athlete or help athletes or coaches get involved independently and, and make a living is something that I've been involved in for a very, very long time. I, anymore, I've, I've, I've kind of like gotten rogue and it's just like me and I don't, I don't really have people uh, that work for me, so to speak, um, mm-hmm. or the, the relationship with, by the way, a lot of the coaches that I certified are very successful coaches today, independently. Um, but it's just really difficult to corral everyone, and you know, because they'll come up with an idea that may may be kind of against the grain, or they might come up with a, an athlete, or, or excuse me, a sponsor that is kind of against the grain. Um, I don't know, but I'm ranting. But at the end yeah. of the day, <clears throat> I just know that it's always been kind of tough to get guys to get together and agree, and you know, and. Co- get this cohesive relationship with one another and then go after th- 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 like I know women will do it like if you you get five because I've, I've trained and coached <laughs> athletes you're saying for, we're better at being collaborative I think so yeah I think so and I, can I, tell I, you something? I would I, tend to as, agree with you but in sport it's sometimes hard or, or in, and I think in or in, in any type of like high performing situation sometimes well, there's egos, um, you know, and that makes it yes. difficult. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I've, you know, as a trainer, you know, I used to own health clubs and things like this. So, I mean, you know me, I'm an old guy. I've been doing this for a really long time. Uh, but as as a coach or a trainer, let's just say trainer, fitness trainer, uh, I love training women because you, if you give them something to do, they do it. You give, you give a guy something to do and his buddy shows up and then they're doing back and biceps that day. You know, because, you know what I mean? They go, they go rogue really fast. They're hard. I mean, I coach athletes to, yeah. to this day. Women, women are super coachable. I would, I will say, I would yeah. totally agree. Yeah. 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 So you know, I think coachable. you've got a better shot at what you're trying to do than if I tried to get a bunch of guys together and try to work it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of going back to what you were saying um, before. So th- the whole idea of this actually started last year. So 2020, when I was in the midst of negotiating my own sponsorship deals and, uh, and my friends were also in the same position, they were talking to companies as well. And I, I had this, this, I was, I was going to say overwhelming feeling, but I, in talking to all of my guy friends, my, my girlfriends, uh, I realized that, that women in the sport were not getting as many sponsorships, um, which again is like that I don't say that to fault to fault Spartan or to fault any brand specifically, but just that it was a reflection that the women's field is much more um, it's much more expected. It's much more um, distinguished. Like you have you have like Lindsay and myself and Rebecca, um, you have, you know, Faye and Ray is kind of off doing her old her own ultra things, <laughs> um, but you have kind of like this these these like top like five of us that are that are pretty pretty solidified for for like the podium at any given race. Um, I think like the stat for 2019 was that there was only like I think it was me, Lindsay, and Rebecca placed like one through three. Um, or sorry, like 
Rebecca, Rhea, and I want to say Faye were like the like third place or uh, most consistently. But but basically, like there were only maybe five of us who were who were in the top three at every single major race. Whereas on the men's side, if you look at the top three, it was like there were ten guys who who like placed in the top three at those major races. So that's just to say that it, the, the women's race is like more predictable. Um, like, well, you know, it's, it's, it's right. easier the to predict that. The women is, is vicious. Um, yeah. I think even more so than it has been within the men's field. Um, but that, but it's the, more predictable, you know, it's, yeah, it's like, yeah. there, there's, there's not as many, there's not as many chain placement changes. And so, so if you're a sponsor and you're looking at that, at, at the women's field, it, I, like I can see how it's easier to be like, yeah, we're going to sponsor one of these top five girls. And basically like the next tier kind of gets like forgotten about. And to me, that was, that was disheartening to see because that meant that when I was talking to those women, they were telling me that, you know, maybe they weren't going to do the U S national series this year, or maybe they were, maybe they couldn't afford it, or maybe they, they weren't going to do it because they kind of felt overlooked and slighted. <laughs> um, and that like, yeah, maybe they would just go to something else instead. Um, yeah. Because they, they in some ways also had nothing to look forward to. Like we're not getting support from companies. And then we're also probably not going to be on the podium of those races because, because they felt like, you know, me and Lindsay were so far ahead of them. And so financially speaking, it like didn't make sense for them to go. So, so I wanted to create a way where there was more investment in the development of the sport. And there is something, there is like more opportunity for women to look forward to who weren't already in that like top three, top five athletes. So a, a question I, I developed while you were talking is, can I assume that these women you speak of, Lindsay, Faye, Rebecca, are not going to be part of this dream team? Yes. So I don't think Lindsay's going to apply to my team. <laughs> no, I, get, I assume that there would be a, a, a bit of a, uh, a rift there if, you know, they're saying, well, wow. oh, yeah. Well, so, so it's interesting. So actually, um, so Faye is one of my experts. Um, Corinna, who, you know, she's not in like the, the standard race series circuit anymore, but, but she is sure very she's... much in obstacle racing. And, and if she wanted to jump back into the, into, you know, like the 10 K distance, like I'm sure she would kill it. Um, so Corinna is involved. And so I, so I have these, these other leaders in obstacle racing involved, but they're, they're just involved at the, the coaching and the nutrition yeah. kind of, um, structure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, but, but it is, it is interesting because I am creating, hopefully the goal is to create more competition in the sport, which I understand is not something that like everyone is going to be excited about. Um, it's something that, you know, I, this is like, it's, it's a mission that, that I, um, that I'm pushing. It's something that I want, but it doesn't mean that it's not any like less uncomfortable for me either. Uh, it's something that like, you know, I still, um, yeah, like I, I still sometimes struggle with, with, the whole concept of like seeing my competitors as friends and seeing them as something that is beneficial. Um, and, and yeah, like it's, th this is not something that is like financially <laughs> going to be like the best in game for me, if that makes sense. No, no. Like I am looking for people to beat me. <laughs> well, can I tell you something, whether you're looking for them or not, they're coming. You know, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, there's, there's no, you know, I've had this, you know, I, I'll go ahead and share this. I probably shouldn't, but I had this conversation with VJ. You know, I've been coaching VJ for about three years now. And uh, when I first met him, I think he was 19 years old, right? And he he was starstruck by, you know, the Ryans and, and the Robert Killians and, and these cats that, are, you know, were, were the stars of the sport. Uh, and to this day are, are still, you know, very relevant in the sport. Uh, but I kept saying, I said, you know what? They're going to get older and you're not. I mean, <laughs> what, you're going to come into your own one day and these guys are going to just get older and they're going get, to get easier to beat. And, you know, to his credit, he said, well, I don't want I don't want to win like that. I, I want to beat them, you know, while they're prime. And yeah. you know, I used to work with professional boxers 
And same kind of deal. You know, you just keep waiting for the, the champion to, to get a little bit older and a little bit more beat up. And then you go in there and you smoke him, right? Um, and it's not, it's not, it's just the way it works. You know, it's the survival of the fittest. And, and in athleticism, that's pretty much the way it works. So um, for you to be concerned about, you know, nurturing the potential competitors that may take your wallet from you, um, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, you got to do your part for them, but you got to do your part for you. You know, you got to stay ahead of them. You might tell them, say, you know, uh, try not to hold on very tight when you grab hold of this and, you know, maybe teach them to fail a little bit. Right. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think it's, um, it, it all goes back to like how, how you see competition and how you see, um, how you see challenges. And I think, um, uh, so I'm, I'm reading a book right now called um, Peak Performance. It's by Steve Magnus and Brad something. Um, but it's all about yeah, yeah, the mental aspect of performance. And, uh, and it talks a lot about um, like race day nerves, for instance, like when you're, when you're nervous um, because of like this like big impending challenge, um, how, you, how you think about that, how you perceive it will affect your performance. And so sure. if you – if you get nervous and then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm nervous. Like, and I, and I'm, and you try to like make that go away and you think it's like, it's, it's not a feeling that you should have. It's a bad feeling. Then you're not going to be able to utilize that energy to perform well. But if you get nervous and you have butterflies in your stomach before a race and you think like, oh yeah, like this is my body preparing itself to perform at a high level, then you're going to use that energy to perform well. And so I think it's, it's very applicable to a situation like this where like, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to bring in more people, bring in talented runners, talented rock climbers, whoever into the sport with the idea that, that they're going to do well. But if I think that like bringing in a faster runner to the sport is going to make me faster, then, then it's, it's not going to be <laughs> as like nerve wracking of a thing. Or I'm going to be able to accept those new athletes better. Well, you know, you're absolutely correct. I mean, everybody that knows anything about athleticism knows if you want to game up, what you want to do is you want to compete with someone that's better than you, you know, yep. because that's that's what's going to bring your game up. If you if you dodge that person, you'll you'll never, never learn what the solution is to become better than them. And that's how world records mm -hmm. are, are broken. It's like. Somebody has to set the standard for someone to, to, to break the standard, right? Um, yep. It's just like the uh, the two-hour marathon, you know. Now that it's been broken, watch, watch, it'll probably be broken again within the next, you know, few years where it's taken how many years to get there, right? Um, but yeah. you, you have to break it before. And so it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's like you, you want to surround yourself with talent. And the more talent mm -hmm. you can be surrounded with, uh, the more likely you're going. it's going to rub off on you. So yeah. uh, you may find somebody that's a diamond in the rough, and I would assume that's pretty much what you're shopping for. You know, somebody that, that maybe not schooled on the nuances of obstacle course racing, but they got some talent in other places that, you know, will, will you know, with a little shaving here and there, they fit very, very nicely into the sport. A good example of that is this, uh, what's his name, Josiah, that came out. Um, you know, here's a Xterra racer, and, you know, nobody was giving him much salt. And... You know, VJ told me, he goes, man, this guy ran my ass into the ground, right? Um, yep. And, and so, you know, I'd be a little nervous about this guy learning how to get through these rigs and obstacles, right? Because obviously enough, uh, if he can shave off some of those issues, he could be a threat. I, I have friends, totally. that, you know, uh, uh, who's staying with you right now? No. I remember seeing you guys at SoCal, first OCR event, I think she did, wasn't it? Yep. And yeah. And she either won. That or... was her. That was her first Spartan race. Yeah. In SoCal. Yeah. And she, she had done two tough mutters before. Yeah. Well, she's like, you know, how do you do this? And boom. And, you know, but because she had that pedigree with her running capacity, she was a threat. Like, they're like, who's this girl? Right. And, and you know what? Bringing yeah. Nell into the sport made me a better athlete. So yeah. like, so as soon as Nell started doing obstacle course racing, her, her mindset was, it was eye opening. She, <laughs> Like she, she went through every single obstacle and, and thought, okay, what do I need to do to prepare for this? Um, and so like spear throw, for instance, she thought, okay, 
um, what's like the spear throw, the javelin. Uh, I know some javelin coaches, so I'll meet with them and I'll see if this helps with throwing the spear. And, and I went from making 25% of my spear throws to making 80% of them because I worked with the javelin coach that Nell brought in right. and, and my spear throw got that much better. Wow. Um, and then like in other things too, like, um, so for her, she, she couldn't go through obstacles as fast as me. And so she needed to focus on, you know, get upping her obstacle game, but also every little thing that she could improve on, which was like running into and out of obstacles quickly. And that was something that I had never really particularly worked on. And that again, like it changed, <laughs> it changed how I raced. Yeah. In 2019 and, that's a and i don't think it's point. any yeah and i don't think it's any coincidence that you know 2019 i started racing with now and i finished as a world champion well i could tell you that uh, early on when i first started looking at ocr and uh, uh it was hunter that introduced me to ocr and when i started to look at that at the time there was money being tossed around pretty pretty well i mean the sport's poor compared to what it was, say, three, four years ago, five years ago, where, you know, you could, as an athlete, if you were a top five, you could start making some pretty decent money. So thinking about qu quitting the day job. Uh, I know Hunter d didn't have to work. He, he was doing fine. Um, but I started asking guys that I knew because I came from the running community and the triathlon community. And I looked at some of these athletes that I knew were studs. And I said, hey, dude, have, have you seen what's going on here with this, this whole thing that's happening? And they're like, what, that mud thing? No, no, really? I'm like, yeah, you got to look at that, man. And, and to this day, I know guys that uh, I've tried to convince to, to cross over into the sport. Because, you know, I mean, Nell could probably profess to you that you can't make any money running. I mean, yeah. you know, one of my clients, actually a, a guy that I mentored for quite a long time, he won the uh, San Francisco Marathon. You know what that gets you? A T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it gets you a t-shirt yeah and you know yeah like, unless you're unless you're winning like major mar like yeah one of the major marathons and you know how that works if you're not from ethiopia or, or uh you know uh south africa someplace uh you you got no chance i mean we haven't really dominated the major marathons in 20 some odd years you know yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you might say uh meb kofletsky uh, won boston but you know, I, I got to be honest with you. Meb's not from here. You know, he, he you know, these, yeah. he's got that, he's got that gene. His ascendant. Yeah, yeah. totally. And so, but look at, look at, look how it works. New York, Chicago, Boston, Berlin, any of those major events. And so look at Boston. If you want, you know, if you run a 220 marathon, everybody thinks you're a stud. You know, mm -hmm. you know where you end up in Boston? Top 100. You know, <laughs> right? There's 100 yeah, guys Yeah, it's definitely, there. yeah. It, it's a different, well, there's just different, there's so much more depth than running, obviously. And uh, I think it's like, it's not dissimilar that if you're in the top, like 1% of obstacle racing, like you can make decent money. And if you're in the top 1% uh, or probably less than 1%, but of, of like road racing, then you make decent money. You make more decent money. <laughs> um, well, yeah, but I mean, but yeah, but obstacle really, racing is just, it's just really, not really, as deep. That's a really shallow community. I mean, when you get down to thinking in terms of who's making a living professionally as a runner, these guys can run. I mean, you know, there's it's, no joke. Oh, it's, it's like world champions make money. It's it's like the top, if you're, yeah, if you're in like the top three of the country, you're making money. But yep. beyond yep. that, there's a lot of really great runners that are not making good right. money. Yeah. Right. And so I, and one of them I know, uh, as a matter of fact, a guy that he lives in Los Angeles here, he, uh, he runs a, like a 223 marathon, I think it is. But he can. He ran the, the, the. He won the Lake Tahoe Triple, three marathons, three days, all three of them under three hours. And mm -hmm. when he finishes, traditionally he'll do a hundred push-ups uh, and a handstand, you know, off the court. I'm like, dude, do you know what obstacle course racing is? And I said, I said, what do you make when you win a race? You get shit. You get nothing, right? I said, I said, you could yeah. make three grand, five grand, if you can. And I know right now it would take him about. Take him about a couple months to, to hone his skills obstacle wise. And yeah. put him but on it, but it probably depends on what he wants to do because there's well, a lot yeah. of runners who just they just no matter what, 
no matter they could be given all the money in the world, but they they want to run and they don't want to obstacle race. Well, that's like somebody telling you, hey, you know what? You should move to China. China's great. It's like, dude, China? No, I'm not doing China. You know, I live in California. <laughs> I don't. You know, it's, it's just a change in lifestyle. It's, it's you're not you're not accustomed to it, and you don't yeah. see it. You know, and I, believe me, I've had conversations with some really high caliber athletes from other sports that just you know, I remember having a conversation with Joe Gray. And yeah. And uh, that's probably five years ago. Joe, have you seen this obstacle course racing? I'm not doing that. I said, yeah. dude, you, you run on a mountain, okay? I mean, can you believe, you know? And it's, it's the same. It's, it's a very similar similar yeah. type of running. Ironically, but I was like that too. I was kind of, I was that athlete. I mean, even with having a running and a rock climbing background, which sets me up much better than just like just a peer runner. Right. Um I still had to be convinced by a friend to try obstacle horse racing yeah. because there was like, to me, it was, it was, it was not like the competitive scene that I was looking for. It, and it, it didn't seem, it seemed like such a departure from normal road and track racing to me that it was, um, yeah, that yeah, I had, well, to, anyway, had to, had to I, be convinced. At the end of the day, I, I, I applaud you for what you're doing. I, I think that, uh, there needs to be more Nicole Miracles out there thinking beyond the moment, right? And uh, so, you know, you know, fish or cut bait, whatever you're doing, I think, I think is is a great model for for others to follow. And I hope you're successful. I think you probably will be. Um, I know you're going to put together a dream team. That's going to be pretty entertaining to see. And uh, you know. Well, thanks. Know. I'm excited yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, good for you. Good for you. I think. I think it's. I think it's. I. I like the business component of this process. I think that 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 uh, it more people should think in terms of developing the sport rather than what race can I go to and take the money and go home. You know, because um, yep. that's what it's going to take. I think if the if if obstacle course. You know, again, just not to reflect back on earlier days, but I've had guys say, well, you think that thing's going to last? You know, what do you think? Is that going to be something like in a couple of years? Oh, well, it's got a lot of momentum and I, and I would try to defend it and say, you know, it's, it's bigger than you think. And I remember talking to sponsors that I had and I'm like, Hey, have you looked at this? And they were like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I, you know, that's going to be yeah. a passing fancy. And now look at the, the, the clothing manufacturers, shoe manufacturers, uh, they're all kind of taking a hard look because there, totally. there's a market out there. I think it's the whole, yeah, there, there's definitely intrigue just in general, I think, because we have such like plush lifestyles, um, you know, people want to be pushed and people want to get out of their comfort zone. I and know. that's one reason why like CrossFit became a thing and became so popular. Um, and I think obstacle racing is even more so it's like it's such a it's such like a natural type of movement like you're running and then like you're primarily just using your body to get over obstacles i think it's just like it's to me it's like one of like the purest sports <laughs> yeah well uh you know just to let you know that i enjoy a cushy lifestyle uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> i've already put in my, my my bumps and grinds and i'm done with that now so yeah, uh, I'm going to lay back and just watch you young punks do what you do. And, and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to sit back and in the bleachers and watch and and, you know, just enjoy what you're doing. I think I think it's amazing. And if I can help along the way, I love doing it. So uh, awesome. I, I'm I'm winning vicariously when I when I've had involvement with an athlete. And I know that there's some influence that I've offered that helped them to get to a better place. That's how I get my yeah, yes, you know. Um, I well, love it's got to be really exciting to see VJ do super well then. Yeah, you know he's a good kid, and, and uh, I we we got together like three years ago. I met him at uh, the LA Spartan race. Uh, no, excuse me, the stadium race. And uh, he knew who I was, and he he kind he the story's kind of cute. He says he kind of ripped by me running because he wanted to, like show me his running ability, and and we talked later on, and he goes. I said, so, you know, you need a little help with your running. And he, it crushed him. He was just like, oh, my God. He goes, the, the nah. Coach Diaz told me that, that my running needed help. And we started working on it. And he's been a grip. I mean, the kid will listen. And he pays attention. And he's learned that the work he put in 
to refine his talent as a runner paid off. And, and, he, and he is a beautiful runner. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So what, so what do you think? Uh, so I was about two minutes behind him in this past race and that's, that's just about as close as I've ever been. Um, so, so is he, is he super fit? Is that, does that bode well for me or? <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, first of all, I think that this being the first race of the season, um, he was a, a little rusty. Mm -hmm. Um, he was fit. I think, I think I run better in a swamp also yeah. with my little, my little tiny stride. You might, I you think might. I, I think that, uh, um, VJ doesn't like to lead races and, uh, mm, and I, and really? I have consulted him on many occasions where I said, look, I don't want you to lead. Do not lead. Let these guys go out there and show you what they got. Stay in the pocket. And then when the time is right, then make your move. And he's done that successfully on many different occasions. Um, and, um, he's gotten to a place where he's confident enough that if he feels it out and these guys are not putting it together, he's going to leave them. And cause he has that much, uh, confidence in his running ability. Um, but the thing and that I, I think that really the, the defining factor with him is he's the total package. He gets through the obstacles quicker than almost anybody does. And, uh, yep. And he's not weak. And either. he's really smart about it too. Yeah, yeah. The thing that I think impresses me the most with VJ is that he has an incredible race head. Like he, I call it race brain when you kind of like get a little, like, you know, you're, yeah. you know, like you don't think straight when you're, when you're racing. Um, and he thinks straight when he's racing. Right. He like, especially something like the tire, like that shows you perfectly that you know, he, he saw a problem and he adjusted for it and he, and he still nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's very, very obstacle proficient. And, and, uh, so it's one thing for, for people to say, yeah, he's a runner. Yeah. He could run, but he will, he will blow through an obstacle. And now that he's got that thing built out there, have you been to his little joint up there in, uh, uh what he calls a black forest thing that he's doing? Yeah. I went there about a week before the race. Yeah. It was I a mean, great little tune up that, Having that Yokohama tire in the backyard uh, probably didn't hurt, um, and he just he he just plays on that stuff. He loves to just play on that stuff. <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, we could sit here and talk all day, and I'd be happy to sit here and look at you while we talk. I said, but given the circumstance, and we've been on for a bit, uh, we're going to put a fork in it. So since people can't hear you right now, you might want to just give them the peace sign or whatever, and. Uh, Listen, best of luck. I'm sure I'm going to see you out there somewhere. If you get out my way, you know, you've always had an open invitation to come hang out. Um, I've offered you before to take a peek uh, to see if there's a little something I might be able to help you with. Maybe not. Um, um, but anyway, I love what you're doing. Best of luck to you. And uh, say hello to Nell for me. <laughs>